The reason why the peace process doesn't work is it's actually built on fraud. It's really built on fraud. It's built on this idea there's a kind of parity between Israel and Palestine. There's no parity. There's one power, a colonial power, colonizing the other side. It's not just occupation. You know, 10, 20 years ago, we used to talk about occupation. What is occupation? Occupation, you have an occupying army, and you can shift this army. This army can, can, can move from one side to another side. If it was just occupation, then the army can withdraw. It's not just occupation, it's colonization. The Israeli settlements, ongoing, continuing, despite the peace process, during the peace process, under the peace process, under the cover of the peace process, the Israelis are day by day building more and more colonization. That's why Israel is a, is, is, is a people, that's why Israel is not presented properly here in the West. The West talk about Israel-Palestine or Israel and Palestinians, kind of equivalent parity, symmetry. There's no symmetry at all. People in Europe, the media in Europe, talks about post-colonial situation. There's no post-colonial in Palestine. Palestine is colonial, still colonial. In the 21st century, they're still colonizing the country. It's the only country on earth which is really colonizing now, openly, with the support of the Americans. Unless we present Palestine properly, unless we use the right language, unless we use the right discourse, we're not going to make much progress. And I think this is something for us here living in the West. I mean, I live in the West, kind of voluntary exile in the West. Um, I go to Palestine, I go to, to Israel once a year. But I think our main job here is actually to present the reality on the ground, which is a colonial situation. Colonial with apartheid i.e. a racist colonial white colony, white settlements, which is expanding. Unless you explain it to people properly in the West, they're not going to understand it. They will continue to think, if you continue to play the German media and the British media, you tend to think about Israel as a kind of normal democratic country. It's got elections and it's got parliaments and it's got labor coming in, uh, sort of Likud liberal. It's, it just presented as a kind of normal democratic society. Of course, if you look at the reality, it's a racist state. Racist state, really. What I mean by racist? It means that a Palestinian in the Galilee cannot marry a Palestinian from the West Bank. Have you heard about it? Legally, the law in Israel says, if you are a Palestinian from, from um, Nazareth, you can't go and have a wife from uh, Ramallah or vice versa. You can't. You can't break it here. Why do you have a situation like that in Europe? Is this not racism of the kind of things we have in, 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 in the 20s and 30s here in Europe, in this country? mean if you are a native of Jerusalem and you live and, 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 and you live in Ramallah, you can't come back to Jerusalem. Is this not racism? What does it mean a Russian settler is coming, uh, uh, coming yesterday and have automatic rights to live anywhere and a Palestinian born in the country, born in the, his homeland, is allowed to live just in a small part of the country? Is this not racism? Crude racism, state racism, legal racism. Look at the laws. 92% of the land are reserved for Jews in, 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 within the Green Lines. This is not racism. Done in the name of Judaism, by the way. It could have been, it could be done in the name of Hinduism or uh, someone else, actually. It's not about Judaism, it's about a racist colonial ideology, which I call Zionism which people are not discussing it, they're not presenting it. They're not actually presenting really what Gaza means. What does it mean to concentrate one and a half million Palestinians in a small part of the country and lock them up and have the keys with you? On one side you've got the Israelis with the keys, on the other side you've got the Egyptians with the keys. People are locked up in prison, one and a half million in prison. It's a large concentration camp. Why the reality on the ground is not presented? Where is the media? Where is the facts? Where is the truth? 
Why is it that there is no truth? Nobody's actually telling you the truth about the realities. Nobody has the, the guts, the courage. Why is it that the German uh, media is silent about the reality on the ground? A country which went through racism, a country which went through a terrible holocaust, except in other people, and we've got racism happening now there. And we've got Israeli genocidal policies on the ground. Why is it that people don't have the courage here to tell the truth about it? And I don't, I don't, I don't blame Jews for that. It. It's not Jews. It's not Judaism. This is not Judaism. This is not historical Judaism. This is not what Jews did. This is not what Einstein and Hannah Arendt thought. Historically, Jews actually were the opposite of that. Hannah Arendt fled this country, fled this country, was critical of Zionism. And Einstein, this is not what Jews do or did in the past. This is a racist ideology which sounds very much like apartheid Africana South Africa. In, in South Africa, they also call it democracy. Democracy for the white. In Israel, they call it democracy. Democracy for the Jews. It's done in the name of the Jews, but it's, 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 a, it's a racist ideology, which you can compare it to German racism in the 20s and to um, Africana racism in South Africa and racism against blacks in America. And, and this is something black. Uh, Barack Obama, black president, is not facing up to the reality of racism. A white colony running an apartheid, creating an apartheid war, excluding people on racial grounds and religious grounds and ethnic grounds, and no one is saying anything about it. They're getting away with it. Of course, the situation in Germany is perhaps slightly much worse than the situation in Britain. I think in Britain there's more debate and more discussion and more... The, 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 on the public, um, public level, um, public opinion level, uh, Britain is actually changing. And not the politicians, not the BBC, if you like, not the government of, of Brown and Blair. The elite in Britain is a bit like the elite here. Totally, totally in the same pocket of, 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 uh, of Americans, really. You know, I'm sorry. I think um, Angela Merkel is another poodle in the same way uh, uh, Blair was a poodle of Bush. It's just another poodle. But, but people on the ground need to, be in reality, on the situation, the people need to know the truth. Unless you tell the truth about their situation in Palestine, we're not going to make progress. And I do believe that people don't really know. In reality, the media doesn't tell them. There's a conspiracy of silence about really what is the situation on the ground and why do we end up with a large concentration in Gaza and why the peace process is not likely to work. And why Obama hasn't got the courage to confront Netanyahu on the issue of settlements. He said he didn't want settlement. Uh, Netanyahu said, I will carry on on settlements. Nothing happened. It's like business as usual. Nothing. What's new about Obama when it comes to colonization and the power of And I think the situation is incredibly dangerous in the sense that if I come 20 years from now, things could actually change for the worse. And it is urgent. It's not the situation, it's not static. The reality on the ground could be altered by the Israelis. The Israelis could be push people um, from one side of the wall to another side of the wall. They've got a lot of villages who are on the western side of the wall. And the Israelis hoping these villages will, could be pushed to the other side of the wall. And the wall is, is moving east and east. There are many walls, actually, on the West Bank. And there are threats to the Palestinians in Israel, 1.2 million Palestinians in Israel who are Israeli citizens. They've been threatened uh, by ministers in the Israeli government. You have Netanyahu saying that you'll have another uh, catastrophic situation if you don't keep quiet. Netanyahu is saying that the problem is not the West Bank and Gaza, the problem is actually in the Galilee. We have too many Arabs. Too many Arabs in the Galilee. We haven't finished. This idea that the 1948 is still with us, it hasn't finished. It hasn't been completed. It could be completed. We need to reduce the number of Arabs within the Jewish state to keep it Jewish. 